Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's stories. All those stories will be time marked down below for your convenience. And we do have some big ones. Of course, the first one I want to talk about is the 0.05% Dragon Lore. If you guys clicked on this video thinking that you could actually go on any website out there and win a 0.05% chance at a Dragon Lore, well, you are most likely correct. It's probably not possible. Now, what am I talking about? I'm actually talking about the website, the case opening site known as CSGO Kingdom. It's actually co owned by McSkillet, a very popular CSGO YouTuber. Many of you guys know about probably a couple of days ago. He actually launched his video about this website and him co-owning the website and it being one of the more legitimate case opening websites out there, which certainly could be true, but I do want to talk about a story about this retweet on the CSGO Kingdom page a couple days ago, actually on July 15th. This guy was retweeted and he tweeted out that he had gone from $4 to over $4,000 on the website. He opened a $4 case to a field tested souvenir dragon lore and withdrew the, withdrew the item with no problem at all. Now, first off, I actually had a live stream yesterday on Twitter, if you guys managed to see that, I thought it was very sketchy and very conveniently timed for CSGO Kingdom that a couple days after McSkillet's video on the website that all of a sudden someone was withdrawing a very high tier item with no problem whatsoever. So I do want to let, stress to you guys the item was legitimately withdrawn. It was actually bought from OP Skins. That's one of their backup options for withdrawing from the website and it was given to the guy but apparently it was because of a bug exploit and here are the things that really do not add up to me at all. So first off I'll show you guys a retweet screenshot again of this guy winning this field tested souvenir dragon lore. And then look at the time, around 2.31 p.m. my time, but that was actually two days ago on the 15th of July. Today is the 17th, and it wasn't until 4.44 a.m. this morning, McSkillet tweeted me this, that it was a bug exploit the guy had done. Now, if we go further back in the, in the actual the tweets by McSkillet, he did tweet out this as well. They said they fixed the bug exploit ASAP, meaning right after the guy had apparently exported the bug to actually win the field tested uh, souvenir dragon lore, the bug was fixed and that's why it answered the question people were like, well if he exported the bug to actually win that, why was he not winning other items and exporting the bug more to actually win thousands of dollars of more items? Because apparently McSkillet said he fixed it ASAP but here's what doesn't add up. The fact is this, they fixed it as soon as possible but McSkillet did not tweet out about it being a bug exploit until almost 30 hours after the incident. Now why that might be is because of course it's free publicity, you know the fact that someone withdrew a souvenir dragon lore and everyone thinks it's legit and they actually that they the guy won it legitly it's free publicity the fact that people can think they can go on the website and enter a four dollar case themselves and actually win a really really sick item well it was kind of fake because the guy was exploiting a bug now I was really curious as well as to why it took so long for McSkillet to reply that it was a bug exploit even though he said he fixed it right after the problem had occurred and why the team had not actually thought at CSGO Kingdom you guys found out that someone was exploiting a bug and then all of a sudden some guy went from $4 to over $4,000 and you didn't think that he was maybe exploiting that same bug you guys had just fixed? You guys didn't think to tell everyone that right away? They waited over 30 hours until this morning and they still have yet to announce it and still when you go to CSGO Kingdom's actual Twitter page, they still have the post retweeted about the guy winning the souvenir dragon lore. So all in all, it's still probably a legit website, although I want to talk about their probably spare system which does not exist, especially a week ago they had no system in place and even right now the probably fair system which makes sure your website is actually legit still does not work. The actual hash and the seed codes do not match up to what you should be winning. That's what I'm showing you guys on screen right now. Thank you to Watch Games TV, a very popular CSGO gambler. He actually pointed this out to me. Their probably fair system does not work. And that's possibly why this was an actual bug exploit because the nonces, thanks to CSGO Kingdom, we tweeted out that this morning, were actually broken and that was possibly what led to the bug being exploited in the first place. So yes, they don't have a probably fair system, but of course it is a very well-known YouTuber, so you can probably trust the website, but for all of you guys thinking that you can go on any case opening website and probably win a 0.05% dragon lore, it's not going to happen. And all in all, still a great website, guys. I want you to know that I have ties to owners of CSGO Kingdom. There are several owners of that website, a few of which I do have high respect for, and I am ruining my relationships just to share that story with you guys. So please, in that comment section, tell me if I should even share stories like that. I thought it was newsworthy, and that's why I shared it with all of you. The whole fact that it did not add up, it was super sketchy. If you guys want more stories like that, please leave a comment down below. So bouncing off of that, though, we still have some great stories in this episode of CSGO News, the first of which is a tiny mishap with souvenir stickers on 
on some weapons out there. Many of you know about, actually we had some late changes to souvenir stickers out there. The gold stickers of these four members on screen are the stickers in general of Keo, Hobbit, Adren alongside Taco. They all submitted late changes to their stickers and they were actually put in the game. So if you guys actually unbox any souvenir packages with these members on that gun, you could notice an issue if you go to OP skins and inspect your weapon or even in game, you're going to have different stickers show up. So I'll give you guys a, a screenshot of a Tech 9 Brass. Thank you to the guy who sent this in to me. If you actually inspect it on your OP skin shop, it will show the older sticker of those members. But then if you go in game and inspect the weapon, it will show the newer sticker. So a tiny little glitch slash bug there, mainly because Valve submitted those sticker changes last. So they obviously forgot to actually change. I think the file was called like an MTJM. I could be wrong about that. So if you guys unbox any of those four members and see a different sticker, don't worry. It'll fix itself eventually in the future. Now, I also want to talk about a huge back band full of July back bands. All of that many of you guys know about. We had a couple weeks ago, not coincidentally, after the actual the last day of the Steam sale, we had a huge back band wave hit everyone. We had them hit bots all around the world. Actually, over 40,000 back bands were delivered the day after the Steam summer sale, which was not coincidental. Many people out there thinking it was actually on purpose, which is so dirty when you think about it. If it was Valve or Steam who actually back banned all these bots after they bought their games, that is so dirty, but if you are botting on these accounts or using them you know, the way they shouldn't be used, I guess you do kind of deserve it. So there were over 40,000 bans a couple weeks ago, and this month we are on pace for over 120,000 VAC bans, which is just on pace with the last you know, several months we've had. We actually had a super high June and then previously May as well. So VAC bans are still on count, and we're still making great progress on those bans all around. Which definitely should help out because I know myself personally, I've had these every single day, and you guys probably had these as well. These fake bots are out of control. I don't know if they even own the game of CSGO, but there are always these fake bots saying, hey, want a free 70 cents on Hellcase? Heck yeah. Hey, dude, want a free 50 cents? Oh, yeah, for sure I do. I've also ran into this new, actually, this guy tweeted at me the other day. There's a new type of scam. I was going to talk about this tomorrow, and uh, forgive me, guys, I'm probably going to repeat this story tomorrow because it's so funny. There's a new type of scam out there. We now have gambling sites, and again, thanks to the guy who tweeted me this, gambling sites are now offering you free skins to gamble on their website, which I imagine once you gamble it, you either win or you lose, and you have to actually deposit more to withdraw that if you do win. But gambling sites are out of control. They now will give you skins just to go on their website, which is it's. It's just insane to think about. Now, I also want to talk about, even more importantly, the crouch jump bug has been spotted at the PGL Major and actually by HLTV has been announced to be legal throughout the entire Major. Now, if you guys saw the phase big matchup yesterday on Inferno, it was exploited a little bit by big, although they won that match fair and square and upset over phase clan. Although afterwards, now we have several teams making gentlemen's agreements to actually not exploit the bug, the, the crouch jump issue. Now, although Kerrigan did say not to abuse it, I really can't understand understand the difference between using it and abusing it. I feel like if you use it, you're trying to abuse it. You, you guys understand what I'm trying to say? So the crouch jump bug is still allowed at the major. I really don't see it to it being too big of a decisive issue because a lot of teams, including FaZe Clan, still use this on Mirage and other maps out there. So I really don't get this actually being a big controversy, but let me know what you guys think down below. That's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did enjoy, please do me a favor, leave a like. More importantly, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be watching CSGO all day long and replying to every single comment that I can. So as always, hope you guys all enjoyed. Leave a comment making making me know if you guys like that first story or if maybe it should be a little shorter, what I should and should not include. So live, love, laugh, a lot. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all tomorrow. Remember, I like you. Goodbye!